Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a flats fly for you. It's a, a, a shrimp pattern um, out of Australia called the Buck and Dub Shrimp. So the hook I'm using is a size 2 or Gamakatsu SL12. Good strong hook. Um, and I'm using a fluorescent orange UTC uh, 140, but you can use anything you like really. Uh, fluorescent orange or fluorescent pink. So I'll get my thread started. Trim away the waist. And I'll attach my weight. Now I'm weighting this quite hit well, reasonably heavily. This is a medium lead dumbbell. But you could use brass or whatever. Get that. Get that on nice and secure. Check it for square. It's worth taking a wee few seconds just to tighten your your eyes down nice and nice and solid, you know, you don't you don't want them moving on you and twisting when you fish. So once they're locked in as always I'll come in with some super glue just to help lock everything in place and I'll run it down the shank. As well, and I'll take my thread just beyond the barb, and that's where I'll tie in my eyes. So, the eyes I'm using are just they're just eyes that I make myself. Um, it's a, a black glass bead. On a stock and island. Coated in resin. See them there? But you can use anything. You can use the EPIs if you like. So. I just like to tie them in at the same time. You can tie them one at a time if you like. Oops. And. Make sure they're roughly lined up. Take two loose wraps. To hold them and then you can adjust. For some reason they're fighting me here. Right. I don't know why but they're fighting me a wee bit so I'll just do them one at a time on either side of the shank usually I split them but I'm just having a bit of difficulty so I'll just unwound them and stuck them on myself so Eye length, a stock length set up to you. Um, I mean, I like them to protrude, protrude behind the bend of the hook. I'd say at least a centimetre. Um, but again, you might like them shorter or, long, or longer. Make sure they're even. tie them down. I'll make sure they get them locked in nice and tight. Now what I like to do just so to separate them slightly is I'll take a couple of wraps between them. Just sort of figure eight and
and that helps display them a wee bit. So, next thing I'm tying in is some bucktail. This is the buck section of the buck and dub trim. I'm just going to sort of hand stack it a wee bit. Not too much, but just to get a sort of rough, roughly similar uh, ending to the, the tapered ends. Take a couple of a couple of wraps, just a fine bunch. Don't need a ton. And I'll tie it in. Trim off the waist. I'll invert the hook. And I'll take another another bunch of bucktail. Slightly heavier. Same again, I'll sort of roughly line up the tips. You don't want any super long fibres or super short fibres. And then come in catch it in and I'll allow this as a tie back I'll sort of draw it down a wee bit on both sides and allow it to spread that creates quite a nice Sort of impression of a rostrum or feelers. <coughs> Again, trim that the length of the body. Tidy up. That's better. Uh, and now for the mouth parts, I'm taking about a bit of Tan Grizzly Marabou. Well, it's really Chickaboo. But, take two. And then it'll just come in, line these up. I'll tie them just sort of to the length of the, the eyes, maybe a little shorter. So, catch these in. Trim the waist. Just come in, tidy up. Leg two, and of with orange tips. On the underside, fold them back so that we've got the, the pearly white, and then two sort of tan. Again, this is entirely up to you. You don't need to don't need to mix up the legs or whatever. You can tie. Or one colour if you want, but I like just the wee hot spot. You can get these locked in. And you should be able to see I've been so already started building the taper into the body. Right, be like trimming the bucktail long. Don't know if you can really see that that well. Um, And then the 
Marabu a wee bit shorter. And then the leg's shorter still. It's already sort of pre-tapering the body. Now, the last sort of bit of tying is um, to make the body, and it's a dubbing loop. So, I'm going to just make a dubbing loop about 5-6 inches long. Back, wrap it, wrap your bobbin around both strands of the loop, then come back to the tie in point. Take your thread forward. And what we're putting in the dubbing here. loop is EP fibers. Right, I've got two colours here I've got a very pale pink and a tan. I'm going to cut it into sections. Now the first section that we're going to the hook bend end of the loop should be longer because it will allow you to sort of blend the material into the bucktail. The rest of them should all be the same size, maybe about a centimetre long. Now, because the EP fibre is very, very slick, right? Wax your loop, right? This is irrelevant for late, like the fly later when you're fishing it because it will, the wax will kind of basically evaporate, it'll become so soft um, but at this stage it provides grip now, the way I find it easiest to work with a dubbing loop with slippy material is I put my middle finger through the loop and then my index finger under and I can use my thumb and index finger to either open or close the loop to let me put stuff in and then stop it slipping. So I'll take my longest section first, right? Get that in there. And you can see that's just sitting there. The, the, there's enough tack in that wax to stop it escaping. Next one. Same again. Keep loading it. You can spread it, make sure it's even, you don't want it bunched. Um, Right, so once you've got your loop loaded, you can just make sure it's sort of evenly spread. Get your dubbing spinner. Get this spun up nice and tight. Just as a wee, a wee tip, if you do to avoid catching your rubber legs in the dubbing spinner, you could just get a wee hair clip and grab them, and that'll keep them out of the way. So get that spun up, and I mean tight, tight as you tight as you dare, without busting it. I mean you should be able to, you should be able to pull on the 
fibres and not have to worry about them coming out. Right, so that's that's in nice and tight, and I'm just going to brush it before I wind. And then I'll just spin that just to get it started. Take the clip away. And then it's just a case of winding this forward to create your body. Sweep the fibres back as you go. When you come to the dumbbells, just bring the, I like to bring the loop over and tie it off at the eye of the hook, right, on the, what will be the top of the fly, and this just helps to sort of mask the dumbbell a wee bit, fold that back, lock it off. So it's tied in in two directions, it can't go anywhere. And I'll just tidy everything up. If you want to put a weed guard on, now's the time to do it. Two whip finishes, as always. Trim away your waist. Now it's time to give this a haircut. Um, so, I've got to pull out any trapped fibres with my bodkin. So, help. Taking this, the time to do this will give you, will make it easier to trim a nice profile than if you just start trying to. Trim it as is. So, first thing, cut the belly. You can just cut this flat. I like to cut it fairly tight. And I'll leave some fibres here, so sort of slightly longer, to sort of blend into the marabou. Sides, much the same. It's up to you, You can, if you want it to, to look a bit more like a mantis shrimp for example, you might want to leave it a bit wider. Um, it's your fly. Trim it to a shape that you will be confident in. And then, on the top, Same thing, just, just come in, trim it to a, a nice sort of shrimpy shape that you like. And that's basically it. Um, 
there's only one more stage really and that's to come in about a head cement over your hot finish and then to imitate the an egg sack um, orange nail polish is used and we sort of saturate the the belly section at the back third right bright orange um, and it looks sort of like a the effect you get is when it dries it sort of clumps up and looks very very much like a, an egg an egg sack so there you go that's the buck and dub shrimp nice little uh, saltwater flats fly I'm sure they'll work for fish uh, all over the world and not just in Australia so I hope that was useful uh, hope you enjoyed it if you did, give me a thumbs up below and remember to subscribe to my channel for more fly time videos. Pit lines guys. Bye.